There's so much interest in the West in the climate change, and yet there's so much spinning of the wheels. There, our, our international panel of climate change is like, if we do everything right, we can limit global warming to two degrees Celsius. Cheers, everyone. We are in a aggravating situation. We have global warming and we have massive poverty. And we have an expanding world population. We need to deliver green energy to all of those people and we need to replace the existing fossil fuel with green energy. Anything, anything that can support that, I'm for it. Anything. I'm Tols, I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Seaport Technologies, which we founded in 2014 to develop new molten salt reactors to save the world. Yes, we are the one with the liquid moderator. Is that something you can talk about? No. Okay. Well, uh, what are the advantages of having a liquid moderator, Torres? Uh, there are different advantages. I would say the main advantage in our moderator is actually not that it's liquid, it's that it's not graphite. The molten salt reactor experiment was shut down by AEC. And AEC was run by a guy called Glenn Seaborg at the time. We're trying to basically pick up from where they stop and, um, and develop uh, a new form of reactor, a molten salt reactor. They didn't have the computers to calculate these advanced calculations that they needed to, to uh, handle the liquid uh, neutronics. So what are the advantages of having a liquid moderator? Over there are some additional advantages to being a liquid, but there, to be honest, there are also some additional challenges in being a liquid. Graphite is, is solid, which has some advantages. So it's not because it's liquid we're using it, we're using it because it's not graphite. Is it mixed with the fuel or is it separate? Oh, it's separate. We separate it with tubes. So that's one of the disadvantages. You need tubes to separate it. We were a couple of guys uh, starting this. Uh, back then I was a PhD student. And one of the other co-founders was a postdoc. He's now a senior scientist actually. So we were at different stages at the, at the university. And when we started this, the, the university didn't want anything to do with nuclear. And they were actually, I would say, quite afraid that, that us doing something nuclear would get them connected to nuclear and thereby causing issues politically or or similar in Denmark. In Denmark we founded the anti-nuclear movement and and we later um, uh, dismantled all of our research programs so we effectively have no education and no research in it and no industry um, in nuclear in Denmark or had at least when we started. Then we started a company and and they would it was natural they were afraid that somebody would uh, would be upset about this somebody in the university management or wherever uh, would get upset so people were afraid that it's completely natural but then now after um, after a couple of years uh, of working in this they actually have phd students in the field uh, and it, uh, we are financing uh, one of them uh, but uh, through a through a project that we are running but the other one is actually financed by themselves so they are actually willing to to themselves take risk now because uh, I guess they, uh, they know, they understand the technology better. The, the anti-nuclear movement in, uh, was really early out in Denmark. Was, uh, Denmark has, we have had a lot of grassroots movements in history. We've been very good at that. And the anti-nuclear movement was formed out of concerns about nuclear and about weapon proliferation and about all of this. Started actually as no weapon movement, then it became a no nuclear reactor movement. And those guys were, I mean, um, they were left wing. Yeah, I'm myself born and raised anti-nuclear, so, so I uh, very much sympathize with that. And, and actually, I, I, um, I think they were right in many ways, that nuclear has some issues. So, so I don't entirely disagree with them. But what they did was beautiful. They, they wrote songs. Instead of talking facts, they wrote songs. And that just worked. So they pretty much won the fight and in, in 85 in Denmark, uh, 1985, we banned the power production from nuclear. The concerns that people had during the Cold War were very much related to the Cold War. The concerns that people have today are quite related to global warming. Uh, so it's a different set of concerns and also we are facing different challenges post you know, Cold War than, than we were during the Cold War. So it's just a different set of challenges. And while nuclear might not have been a good match to the problems that, that uh, were back then, it is a necessary match today. How is Seaborg doing right now? I think we're doing quite well. We, we, we four doubled in size this year, which is uh, too much expansion. Now we're 16 people. That's, uh, 
that's hard. You need to learn new management structures. And actually, we had to learn management because none of us knew that. So there's, there's a lot of, uh, of lessons to learn. I think one, in ha one important thing that happened recently was that China got a lot of funding for motor soul racing. They are doing that in connection with the Navy, so we haven't heard from them in the, in the environment since they did it. But, but um, it's important because that will prove that the technology works. And, and, and I know that there's a lot of people out there competing about who is first to market and all of that. The truth is that the market is so big that it's not, it's, it's not possible to imagine one actor on the market. Not even one nation and not even ten. It's, I mean, it, you couldn't imagine one car uh, manufacturer or one oil company. You couldn't imagine that. And this is bigger. So, so I, don't think it's, um, I don't think it's bad if somebody has success. I think that somebody should have success. It's unfortunate that it's involved with the military, but, but it's very fortunate that it's happening. Because now the world knows that it's happening. We all know that it's happening. It's just a matter of when and who will win. China will probably, most likely, be first, but they will be first with a military application. Who will be first in this civilian market? And who will, who will, gain, who will earn the money in the civilian market? That's the question. Seaborg, we doubled in size first year. Second year, we doubled in size. Third year, we, we quadrupled in size. If we, continue, if we continue that development, by 2024, everybody in the world will be speaking Danish. <laughs>